Hey guys, Frank the Pest Geek here. Well, I'm having a discussion online and a couple of people um, have responded. Very few people can actually get involved in this conversation because most people aren't involved really in sales. They're mostly technical people selling a technical product. Um, they're selling um, features and they're very poor at selling benefits. And I've been talking about the reality that the market sets the price for the product or service. And that you, as the seller of that product, you can't go so far above a market price before nobody will buy your product unless you can demonstrate value. If you can demonstrate value and value is something that in pest control is invisible. And I'm going to prove it to you. You can't use the same analogy. I like how people can pontificate and they can come and basically start talking about things that they do know something about, but make a correlation with it in a product that cannot be done, like pest control. And I'm going to prove it to you. You can't build a scale you can't scale if you're gonna sell really high priced 20 to 30 percent above the market you can't scale we haven't been able to do it there isn't a company in miami that has been able to do it and there isn't a company nationwide that has been able to do it with the exception probably of one to two companies that you can point out who are probably 50 60 year old companies that are regional and that have a, a, a brand presence because they're, they have locked up the market with such high quality and it's such a small market in the region that they were able to do it because they were there at the right time. Or they built it over, they built this brand and this image over 50 years and they've been able to grow. You can't scale a business. I'm not talking about you as a solo operator being able to live and sell $365,000 a year and make $150,000, $200,000 income for yourself as a solo operator. I am talking about scaling to where you're doing two, three, four, five million dollars $5 with 10, 10, 15, 20 employees. You can't do it on being the most expensive guy in the market. Now, the most expensive guy on a technical basis could be the guy that's the penny over everybody else or $5 over. If everybody in the market, if you take what I do every year is I take and I go on my competition online because that's where I compete. I compete online. Why? Because I am and I am established myself in a niche market with a blue ocean where I don't have a lot of competition. I have indirect competition. I don't have a lot of direct competition. What's the difference? I only have, to, to, to give you an example, I only have three competitors, maybe four in the market, but I'm talking about two counties and uh, almost three million people. These guys are not huge. One has four technicians. The other one has four technicians. And the other company, I think, is a little bigger, but they franchise. That, the franchisee, which is in this sphere, is actually the lowest priced guy of all of them, where they're selling their service for $440 a year, while I'm selling my services close between initial service, first time, first year, you're going to spend about $700 something dollars with me for general pest control. Not to mention, I'm the single most expensive guy in the market for lawn care in my market. And my market is the county, Miami-Dade County. That's one and a half million people. It's probably one of the largest counties in Florida. And I sell my lawn care at $20 per thousand. But I sell a monthly service while Oregon Truly, Terminex, and all these guys are selling lawn care, lawn spray for $49 a month on a quarterly basis 
and I'm selling it at about $85 to $120 a month on a monthly basis with my client. So I'm selling it at three to four X. I mean, I would go in to a house that had, the guy was spending on two and a half acres, $179 a quarter with a major competitor who's a national brand. And I come in at $600 a month. Now that's full service. That's two and a half acres of lawn shrubs, home and mosquito control for $600 a month. That's a lot of value. On top of that, we're eco-friendly, we're doing naturals, and we're getting better results than they were with the national brand. But you can't scale that because I only close of those deals that call me, it might be one out of 50. Why? Because the rest are not my client. When you're selling and you're, and you're deciding who your client is, my client is the 1% that has three capabilities. Number one is they want my product. The reason I focus on SEO, and I'm gonna show you a video where I've grown my SEO in the last two months, 17% over what I was already doing to about 16,000 clicks a month on my website. I'm gonna show you a video so you see that I'm not full of it. All these gurus, I fired, I hired a company that tanked my SEO and I took it back and I actually improved it 17% in the last three months from what I was doing. So when I know when I'm talking to you, I know what I'm talking about because I know what I'm doing. I don't know what anybody else is doing. I can't tell you what anybody else is doing. I can only tell you what I'm doing. And we've been able to grow and I've been able to live pretty well and pay myself pretty well because I have more dollars available to me, but I wanna scale. I can't scale at my pricing. I need to make, I need to go on the diffusion of innovation from selling to exclusively to the 1% who wants my product, can afford it, and are willing to pay for it. Those are the three things you need to have a customer. You can have a prospect, but you can only have a customer if you have all three. Because you can tell the guy, well, yeah, I'm not going to go with this other company, but I'm not going to buy from you either because your pricing is too expensive. You didn't make a sale. A lot of people say, well, they didn't buy from the other company because I told them they were a bad company. They're going to go look for somebody else. They just didn't buy from you. So you can't scale a business unless you can have the fusion of innovation where you can sell to at least 10% of the market. When you have the most expensive product on the market because it is difficult. I have an IPM service that integrates 25B and reduce risk products and minimum risk products. And I offer a holistic service where we look at the entire structure, we look at the entire person and the ones that are buying this service are the people that are buying vegan. They have a lifestyle and they are willing to pay for what it costs because we can articulate to them. This is why I do so many videos because the only way I can show you, the only way I can demonstrate what I do is to actually show you our process. So we have to show our process to everybody in order to get the client because over 10% of our leads come from YouTube alone. And when we are explaining what we do, trying to explain IPM to a client, can't be done intellectually by you explaining exclusion and talking technical terms. We have to show them what we do, and then I challenge them to find any company that they've ever seen and ever done pest control, do pest control this way. And the answer is they never have and they never will because they're not going to buy pest control every week from a different company. This is why branding is very difficult in pest control and why sales is very difficult in pest control because you cannot as a salesperson or a technician prove your quality. Show me how you, I, you t I have everybody because I sell quality, because I sell quality, because I sell quality. Show me how you can prove your quality. You can't because you're selling the unseeable. And I'll prove to you, you can't use the same mentality 
Well, I sell luxury. Look at Porsche. Look at Mercedes. Look at BMW. Look at Rolex. Look at Publix. Look at Kroger's. They sell tangible products. And what they sell is a commodity, but they sell an experience when you walk into their store. And you don't have that as a luxury brand unless you can create a luxury brand experience, which starts with your marketing. Then it's when the first person answers that phone, how they take care of that customer. And then how the sales process goes where you demonstrate your quality. And then the service technician actually pulls off what the salespeople promise and what the brand promise is with the technical person and then the care after the service and then the service when they have a problem how do you respond were you out there exactly as fast as you send a salesperson to serve that client so that the experience now is complete and that takes time and building brand takes decades. Building that reputation takes decades. You can't build that reputation a year because you don't have the bandwidth. You, as a solo operator, you don't have the money. You don't have the time to invest in brand. You're getting most of your clients initially through referrals. And unless you can multiply the referrals with video and get video reviews and video referrals where you can post and show them to your client to accelerate the process, you can't compare yourself to Rolex or Porsche or Bentley or Lamborghini or Hunt's tomato sauce or Palmolive. These are brands that are icons in the world because they paid the millions and billions of dollars to become icons. And you're not going to become an icon in a year or two years or 10 years. And you have all of these gurus telling you how you can do it. And the reality is that none of them have been able to prove that they've helped build a brand from zero to three, four, five million dollars and grown exponentially in a marketplace where they dominate the marketplace and they are a large, important brand by telling you that you need to raise your prices and be the most expensive guy. Now, listen to me, there's a difference. Here's the caveat. There's a difference between you were a low baller and you were selling your products so under the market that you were never going to be profitable and you never were going to be the scale versus you selling your product within range of the marketplace and being 5 to 10% over everybody because you can demonstrate your quality and you can demonstrate that you're a smaller brand. Most customers understand that if they go with a national brand, they're going to get a lot of fluff. But yet, if you ask most of the franchise guys that own franchises, they understand the value of that marketing. And they understand that if they bought a franchise and they put in a half a million, a quarter million dollars, that they're going to get that back a lot quicker than if they did a startup on their own and tried to reinvent the marketing. That's a reality. If you own a Pestmaster franchise or you own an Orkin franchise, you're going to recover your dollars and build your business a lot quicker than if you said, I'm just going to do it myself when you're a solo operator. And you don't know anything about sales. You don't know anything about marketing. You don't know anything about branding. You're a technical guy who was fed up with your boss, who was fed up with being ripped off because you felt you weren't getting paid enough and you went into business for yourself and now you got to wear 15 hats. And you're tired and you're exhausted because you're working 12 and 14 hour days and yes, you're making more money. 
And yes, you're making double, but you're also working double wearing five hats. And what all of these gurus are preying on is the fact that you are tired, that you are a solo operator, that you don't have any marketing experience. And yes, can they help you get to the next level? A lot of them can. But you can't tell me in the same breath that most of these guys have never operated an actual pest control business where they owned it, where they scaled it, and where they did everything they're telling you to do to up your prices. Understand what I'm telling you to up your prices. If you're doing $35 monthly restaurants, you're grossly underpriced. There's a difference between being priced according to the market where if the average company and you're competing online in that atmosphere and online with Google and you don't have a USP, you say, well, my USP is I sell quality. Again, you can't demonstrate that. You're selling the unseeable. How does somebody define quality in pest control? I want you to tell me. How do you articulate quality? Well, I do good work. That's expected of you. Well, I have 25 years of experience. You're not going to get a young, I have to be, you're not going to get a young 25 year old kid who just started a year ago. You're going to get me. What happens when you can't sell you anymore? Because that happened to me where people said, the reason I'm buying from you, Frank, is you're so knowledgeable. And then I had to send technicians and people were had their hands up in the air going, oh, no, 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 no. I bought you, man. I paid for you. I didn't pay for you to send. I'm not going to pay the same amount of money for you to send me a new technician with no experience. Even after a year or two, the customer said, bro, they're not you. They're not you. And I can't be trapped into being me. I can't scale my business. So you now you don't get me. You get my people. Because I can talk to people, but most of the technicians I hire are technicians that are introverted. I'm a strange bird, dude. I can do sales. I can do creative. I can do technical. I can flip a hat and be and understand a PL and understand finances one minute and then turn around and be a total social butterfly and then go into being a total geek the next and go left brain. That's an anomaly. To find a guy who can sell, is charismatic, has the soft skills, and is a good technician, it's almost a freaking unicorn. And in this market right now where you can't get people and they want $25 to $40 an hour to do what they do, because of their experience and because they know they're good and because they know they can talk to the customer and you saying, I can't afford you at 25 to $40 an hour because I am a one man show. And that requires me to cut my salary, my lifestyle in half in order to pay you. And I can't do it. You're in a catch 22. So when somebody tells me, Oh, well, look at Porsche. Well, nobody walks into a Porsche dealership comparing prices. People call around on the phone and says, well, we're calling around for prices. Nobody calls around for prices for a Porsche. Nobody calls around for prices for a Rolex. Nobody does it when they're, when they're buying any a Lamborghini. Nobody goes shopping around for prices when they're buying a luxury home. They're looking for what they want. They know they want it. They can afford it. And they're willing to pay for it. They'll say, I'll have an argument with you. Anybody, I'll challenge you on this. The, my customer who just finished spending $5,000 on a set of professional golf clubs to pay golf He's going to go spend $600 on a round of golf and he's going to shop around for prices on a termite job. And when your pricing nationally is between six and eight dollars, how do you justify to him that your Termidor application 
around that property is better than the competitor's Termidor because we're going to do it right. Well, they're claiming the same thing. Nobody has a, has a sign on their door that says, we're going to do it wrong, but we're going to do it cheap. No. When you've got national brands who have marketing dollars up the wazoo that you will never have, with even 3.5 stars, well, that, that, that crappy sales guy that's selling BS is going to outsell you any day of the week. Because he's a better salesperson than you are. Because he's got a brand backing him. Because he's got infrastructure. And he's going to sell it at $4. When the average price is 6 And you're going to whine, complain, and bitch about it. And cry. And that same customer who spent $6,000. Who lives in a million dollar home. You will sell him. That job at a top at $8 unless he was recommended and unless it was a referral. But on marketing and on advertising, how do you demonstrate that when you don't know who he got prices from, unless you can demonstrate and show him, well, I'm going to pop the block here. I'm going to drill here. I'm going to come back in three months. I'm going to do this. And you don't have a sales process in place. To differentiate your brand from the other brands in the market selling it at the same price. But don't come and tell me that because you're so freaking good, you're going to sell it at $10 a lineal foot unless you're going to throw in stations on top of that. You can upsell it because you sold more quality. You're going to sell a combo of liquid and bait station and you're going to drill. And you're going to color match the concrete. And you're going to come back in three months and do a free follow-up inspection. And unless you can demonstrate the value and give them something more, substantially more like, you know, you're going to pay regularly 3 to $4 for base stations per foot. We're going to do a combination. We think this is the best in the market, the best protection you're going to buy. We're going to give you a liquid treatment and then we're going to install stations because now you're selling a station service once a year you're not selling a just at an annual inspection and a renewal on something and you're renewing a contract without performing a service if you can do that and demonstrate value yes you're going to upsell the client that's not the same as being a most expensive guy on the market where you're selling your product at 30% more for the same service. Nobody's going to pay it. When I walk into Publix, what I've gotten accustomed to is the freshness. The reason I go to Publix is because of the freshness of their produce. Because I will go to Aldi and buy a cucumber in three days. That, that cucumber is rotten. Yes, I bought it for a dollar versus 235 but I better eat it in two days. The quality of the produce, but it's a visible, tangible product that you can touch, that you can have an experience with. Plus, the culture of the company that's almost a hundred year old company, and the culture they build and the people they hire, and they've got an entire system that you don't have as an independent. You don't have that infrastructure, you don't have those SOPs. And what are you going to do when you hire your first technician? You don't have training protocols. And you got to go through this whole process. So you can't scale a business in pest control like you scale something else. Even you don't have downloads. It's not a product people can experience until after they've bought it. And they've gone through the entire process with you of about a year and experience. And then you start getting the referrals from them. Here in Miami, people are so busy that the customers we're getting reviews from are customers that have been with us for two to three years. Everybody's told me how to get reviews. The problem is they're bogus reviews. When I see somebody with two, 300 reviews in this market, they're just as old as I am, and they've got two, 300 reviews, they're usually paying for them. You can't be honest. You can't have 100% integrity 
and say, I'm not going to give you a discount if you give me a review. You're offering something in exchange for that review in order to get it. You're paying for me. You have to be because I know because you told me. I know what people are doing. So if you're telling me that you want to have 100% integrity and you want to grow and you want to be the most expensive guy, you're going to spend the next 15 years growing your business. And I'm not saying you not to have integrity. You've got to have integrity. I'm just telling you, you can't do it with what all the gurus are saying. Because I sat down with the gurus, the sales gurus, and say, Frank, the reality is if, if you give up the initial service and do it for free and worry about the long-term client and then worry about upselling the client, that's how you're going to grow your business. That's that simple. I'm giving to you an entire program in 30 seconds. Give away the initial because the lifetime value of the customer is what's important. Raise, you know, sell them upsell on services. And that's how you're going to grow the business. Now, how many of you are comfortable with upselling? You're not. How many technicians are you going to hire that are going to be comfortable with upselling? I'll tell you the number, 10%. If you've got 10 technicians, one will be a salesperson, the rest of the nine. Why? Because I'm having conversations with people that have one, two, three, four, five million dollar companies and says, bro, I, can't, I incentivize our people to sell. They won't sell. They just rather work more hours and put in overtime than sell. Then I've got the millennials who I will offer them the overtime and they're going home at six hours and a half, seven hours and not even working 40 hours and they're happy with that. Bro, the realities of what we have to do to grow a business is not for everybody. It's easy. The reason I hear everybody telling me oh, I'm going to stay small and I'm going to stay a solo operator is because I don't want to deal with all this. I don't want to deal with it. That's the reality. So you can't compare yourself to Rolex. You can't compare yourself to Ping. You can't compare yourself to a luxury store like Giorgio Armani, who's selling a luxury. When people buy a Rolex, they're buying it purely on emotion and on ego saying, I want to tell the world I've arrived. I'm somebody. I'm respected. I got a $15,000 Rolex on my wrist. What do you have? I drive a $160,000 Porsche Carrera. What do you drive? I live in a $2 million house. Where do you live? And you're a technician making $50,000 a year. And you don't have a backbone and you don't have a presence, and you don't know how to relate to people, and they run all over you. That's the reality. Me, I can disarm a guy like that. I take a guy like, I've had guys tell me, You're, I want you to treat here, and I want you to treat here, and I want you to treat there. And I will stop them right in their tracks. Says, what do you do for a living? I says, I'm a lawyer. I said, do me a favor. Focus on law so that you can afford me and let me do what I do. We have standard operating procedures and there are laws and we know what we're doing. We're going to do it our way. And from that point on, that guy never challenges me again because I stood up to him because he's got, he's a yes man. He's a power guy. And I stood up to him. If one of my techs tried to do that, he would eat him alive. That's the reality. I'll give you another one. Let's, while we're talking here. I want to see if you guys really believe your own BS. I want you to call me out on it. Because they'll tell you, well, what I would do if I was selling pre-treats is I would find me the luxury home builders. And I would go to them. And I would sell them a Termidor treatment versus a Premise or Dominion 2L treatment on a Metacloprid because it is superior for their client. Well, how many of you have the capability of making that sale? How many of you have the gonads to go after strategically and have the time and the patience and the experience to do strategic sales to go after a, a builder for one, two to three years until you get that account, invest the time in all the luxury builders to go after that sale 
that might take you two to three years visiting him every month and trying to sell him on the idea that he's a luxury home builder and that he needs to buy your Termidor treatment. Why doesn't he just buy the Termidor treatment from the existing guy and says, from now on, I want you to do Termidor treatments? What's going to differentiate you between that you and that guy? You tell me. How are you going to do it? What's your strategy? Because the ad national average is between 18 cents and 35 cents. And it's all based on how many gallons you need per thousand square feet and how much chemical you need to apply to that ground per thousand square feet. A monkey on a hose can do that job. If he can add and he can subtract and he can multiply and you teach him how to do it once, he can do a pre-treat. It's water through a hose with a power sprayer and so many ounces of product per thousand square feet. How are you going to convince a luxury home builder to go from 18 to 35 cents to go to 50 to 60 cents unless you market directly to the consumer where they're demanding it when their house is built? Do you have the bandwidth? Do you have the time, the patience, the expertise to sit in front of a camera like this and talk to the homeowner directly and produce YouTube videos and do retargeting ads and invest thousands of dollars in time to acquire that luxury customer as a small guy? The answer is you don't and you won't. So when these gurus are making sales says, well, I would do this and I would do that and I would pitch it this way and I would say this to them. I want to see them actually go out and do it and pull it off. And reality is it's going to take you, even if you say all the right things, you still have to do a strategic sales strategy that can take you a year. You wanted to go in and convert all of the condominiums in your area from an every door $2 to $3 service to a only inspection, monitoring, and then treatment of that unit at $15 to $25 to $35 to $50 a unit, you're only going to get one out of a thousand. That's reality. I mean, we're talking about reality here. How many of you have successfully converted on a sales day where you had five apartment buildings to go, quote, and on that day you sold them and you said, no, we're going to switch it over and we're going to only do 25% of the units. We're going to do inspection and then we're going to do baiting. And every time we got to do baiting on one of these units, you got to pay us an extra $25 a unit. Tell me how many of you have actually pulled that off? 